Hello, this is Miss Bratt, and I'm going to talk to you about a poem called Bayonet Charge, written by Ted Hughes, and it was published in 1957. Ted Hughes, he was an English poet, and his father served and survived in World War I. Ted himself then spent two years as a mechanic in the RAF before going to university, so he did have some um, real-life war experiences. The poem focuses on a single soldier's experience of a charge towards em enemy lines. It describes his thoughts and his actions, his feelings, as he tries to stay alive in this terrible time of war. The soldier's overriding emo emotion and motivation is fear, and that replaces the more patriotic ideals that he held before the violence began, before he went into the war. So here's the poem. Suddenly he awoke and was running, raw, in raw-seamed hot khaki, his sweat heavy, stumbling across a field of clods towards a green hedge that dazzled with rifle fire. Hearing bullets smacking the belly out of the air, he lugged a rifle, numb as a smashed arm. The patriotic tear that had brimmed in his eye, sweating like molten iron from the centre of his chest. In bewilderment, then, he almost stopped. In what cold clockwork of the stars and the nations was he the hand pointing that second? He was running like a man who has jumped up in the dark and runs listening between his footfalls for the reason of his still running. And his foot hung like statuary in mid-stride and the shot-slashed furrows threw up yellow hair that rolled like a flame and crawled in a threshing circle, his mouth wide, open, silent, its eyes standing out. He plunged past with his bayonet towards the green hedge, king, honour, human dignity, etc., dropped like luxuries in a yelling alarm to get out of that blue crackling air, his terror's touchy dynamite. Now, there's a few lines that you should pay close attention to in this poem. Um, in line seven... <clears throat> the patriotic tear that had brimmed in his eye. Okay, so his patriotism, that idea of him wanting to be in the war and fight for his country, that country that he was so proud of, it starts to turn to fear and pain and he begins to wonder why he is even there. Further down the poem in line 10, in what cold clockwork of the stars and the nations was he the hand pointing that second? That's referring to the people in charge of the war, that they don't care about the individual soldiers. It's emphasising that the soldier feels insignificant and that nobody's there to protect them. And nearly at the end of the poem then, in line 20, king, honour, human dignity, etc., dropped like luxuries. Things like king, honour and human dignity are the reasons that most people would fight in the war, but using the word etc. at the end suggests that they're not even worth listing anymore because he's been reduced to a very basic level, some animalistic human instincts. He's attacking out of desperation, and not out of moral principle or for his king or for honour. Some key themes in this poem are the effects of conflict, the reality of war and fear, and it examines the deadly effects and the realities of war. Exposure and charge of the Light Brigade both do similar things, and you could also compare the soldier's fear with the fear of the narrator in the prelude.